Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlothauer here, and I'm very proud to announce my updated seasonal winter forecast of 2025-2026 here, as you all have been waiting very patiently for this, as this upcoming winter is looking even more extreme than what we had last winter with extreme Arctic outbreaks very likely across the northern tier with big snowstorms and blizzards for the Midwest, for the northeastern U.S., as well as big lake effect snowstorms likely for the Great Lakes region, and then, of course, very dry and warm likely for the desert southwest. So in this update, we'll be breaking down all those details. The first slide that I wanted to show you all is the NOAA Coral Reef Watch Sea Surface Temperature Anomaly Map, and this illustrates that we do have a weak La Nina that is in place across much of the central and eastern Pacific with the subtropics running extremely warm for this time of the year. This is the warmest that the North Pacific has ever been in modern history, especially for the northwestern half of the Pacific, running at least four to five degrees warmer than it should be for this time of the year. So this is impacting marine wildlife. This is impacting the global circulation across the northern tier of the hemisphere. And this is going to really negatively impact our polar jet stream as well as our subtropical jet stream for this upcoming winter season. So that's basically with what we're seeing right now. Now, when taking a look at the latest QBO, which is going to influence the stratospheric polar vortex this upcoming winter, as well as the lower troposphere polar vortex as well, which then at the end of the day will influence whether or not will we get any extremes in our winter weather pattern this upcoming winter. And the answer to that is we are going to see extremes, and that's because of the easterly phase of the QBO. So every one to three years, the QBO shifts phases from the easterly phase to the westerly phase and vice versa, okay, at predicted intervals. And when the QBO is in its easterly phase, that is winds blowing from east to west across the tropical portion of the world, okay? This also helps suppress the MJO, which at the end makes things a little wonky in our polar flow jet streams in lower atmosphere. And then this usually helps to lead to more stratospheric warming events that lead to out-of-control polar vortexes that could race their way southward from the polar regions and bring us more extremes. When the QBO is in its westerly phase, that means westerly winds are stronger than average. That means our polar vortex overall is likely to be more stable, meaning less extreme winters are anticipated. So last year, we were in the easterly phase of the QBO, not as significant as now. That's why I think this winter is going to be more extreme. So with that being said, let's take a look now at what our climate models have to tell us for this upcoming winter season. And I'll tell you right now, the latest CFS model here, um, this was out about a couple of days ago, and this is forecasting for January, February, and March. And we can see what we're looking at here, much below average air temperature anomalies across the northeast across the great lakes across the northern tier including for canada and that is why i am very confident that we're going to have a pretty big extreme weather winter pattern in place this winter it may not be in december or january but it could always arrive in february and march remember winter goes from december 21st through march 22nd we have a long way ahead of us when winter actually starts. Don't expect this to arrive in November or December, okay? Because it's going to be delayed as our weather pattern typically is. So looking at the CANSIPS model, you can see much below average um, air temperature anomalies across much of Canada, as well as much of the northern tier of the United States, well above average for the deep south, similar to the CFS model here. So there is pretty good confidence that the Deep South is going to have one or two big Arctic outbreaks, but overall it looks like it is going to be a mild winter, especially in lower latitudes, and a warmer than average one across the four corners and even dry as well. We'll get into more of that in just a bit. 
The North American Multi-Model Ensemble for January, February, and March highlights the entire United States here, pretty much seeing at least some degree of above average temperatures, including the European model, not believing with the CANSIPs and the CFS, indicating something similar to the North American Multi-Model Ensemble, showing us that the um, many areas will have temperatures slightly above average to well above average, especially for the four corners where those anomalies are greatest. So now let's take a look here at what the Climate Prediction Center is highlighting. Pretty much similar to mine and similar to the CAN SIPs as well as the uh, Climate Forecasting System version 2 model indicating that there is a leaning below chance of below average temperature chances for the Pacific Northwest for the northern tier of the United States as well as Canada, which is not on this map. I can kind of give that a green light there that Canada is going to have some very, very, very significant Arctic outbreaks, something that you have not seen in recent memory, at least since at least 2020 and some other past winters. And then the deep south here, looking at leaning above average when it comes to those chances for temperatures. So now let's take a look here at your, um, your precipitation accumulation anomaly forecast here. Okay, so green areas indicate above average. Yellow and uh, golden colors indicate below average anomalies. And so you can see here a wetter than normal winter is looking likely here for Indiana for much of the Corn Belt as well as the Appalachians, including for the Northeast and also for portions of the Pacific Northwest and the portions of the Intermountain West there of the Colorado Rockies, leaving California, unfortunately, drier than average. When we look at the Can Sips model, at this you can see a whole different ballpark literally most of the united states other than parts of the pacific northwest here like the cascade range as well as say idaho and montana you're looking at below average rainfall other than those two areas that are likely to see somewhat above average rainfall chances and then of course when we look at the north american multi-model ensemble more fitting to with what I'm predicting here with above average for the Pacific Northwest, more likely than not than what the CANSIPS is showing. However, for um, California looking at a drier than normal winter, unfortunately, that's been showing up in, in the last couple of months of model data and in several model runs that do indicate that. And then for the southeastern and deep south of the United States, we're looking at a drier than normal winter or your guys' areas, especially for Florida, looking at bone dry conditions, perhaps, especially for February and March. Now, looking at the European seasonal forecast, this is more that fits the bills with what the Climate Prediction Center actually shows. Well above average chances of rainfall anomalies across much of the Pacific Northwest and also across the Corn Belt, including for the upper Midwest there of the United States. That includes for Indiana as well as Ohio looking at a wetter than normal winter coming up for this year, which is really needed given the fact that Indiana right now is dealing with severe to extreme drought-like conditions. So you could certainly use some relief on the way there. For the deep south, though, and for the southeast, well below average anomalies of precipitation is looking more likely than not for those areas. All right, and the seasonal precipitation outlook from the Climate Prediction Center pretty much highlights it with what the euro is showing and with what I am predicting here with wetter than normal conditions across the Pacific Northwest and also for the Corn Belt and the upper Midwest of the United States with below average chances of rainfall across the deep south of the United States and the Intermountain Southwestern deserts there as well, including for Alaska looking at above average. So let's get into the deeper part of this video with my own personal predictions on what I am thinking that is going to shape up for this upcoming winter season. And this is very important to you all because you guys like these maps a lot. And of course, these are not very easy to make at all because it takes a lot of thinking, a lot of um, research, what I think is going to likely happen. So right now, the first layer highlights a 33 to 40% chance for below average temperatures for much of the Great Lakes for the Northeast and for the Pacific Northwest. Layer number two, that includes for much of the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains, there's a 40 to 50% chance of leaning below average chances of uh, temperatures there. And then, of course, there is a likely below chance 
50 to 60 percent that is for the great lakes region including for the northern plains so definitely arctic outbreaks are more likely than not over these areas and of course the more extreme part of the forecast is a 60 to 70 percent chance for below average temperatures for Mon uh not for montana for minnesota that's what i was thinking about uh, for central and northern Wisconsin, as well as portions of Michigan. And this is where I think we are going to have the most extreme Arctic outbreaks of this winter season. More so across northern Minnesota is where I think the worst of it is going to be. So now let's take a look now at who is going to have above average temperature chances for this winter season. And you can see for the deep south, for the desert southwest, looking at a slight chance of above average there but this is only going to escalate as we go into layer number two this includes for the deep south and for the desert southwest again uh, for central texas a 50 to uh, a 40 to 50 percent chance there of above average temperatures and then of course a 50 to 60 percent chance for above average temperatures for phoenix arizona and for southern florida that is what i think is going to happen so to summarize all of this for our temperature anomaly outlook that I've made, you can see which areas are going to have below average temperature chances and which areas I think will have above average temperature chances with the gray, uh, gray areas highlighting equal chances. That is a 33, 33, 33, 33 below, 33 above, and 33 normal. So basically, there's no chance of seeing anything. It's kind of the battle zone on average. But yes, if you're in the gray area, you could still get some big Arctic outbreaks, but it all averages out at the end of the day, if you, that makes sense. So now, what about the precipitation? Who is going to have a wet winter and who's going to miss out on a meaningful winter this year? So looking at the precipitation anomaly forecast that I made here, you can see the Great Lakes as well as the Corn Belt, including the Appalachians, a 30, 30 to 40% chance of above average precipitation, including for the northern tier of the United States and the Pacific Northwest. When you take a look at layer number two, there's a 40 to 50% chance of above average precipitation again for the same locations, pretty much for the Corn Belt and the upper Midwest there of the Great Lakes, as well as the northern tier of the United States and the Pacific Northwest. And then layer number three highlights a 50 to 60% chance. So that's pretty decent that uh, much of this area here gonna, is going to have to really pay close attention for this winter for significant snowstorms and blizzard conditions, perhaps. And then, of course, up here in the northern tier of the United States, you have also a 50 to 60% chance of above average precipitation. But now, who is going to miss out on this winter? And it doesn't look very good, unfortunately. Uh, for the deep south and for the desert southwest. You can see uh, areas in the lightest shade of brown here indicate a 30, 30 to 40% chance of seeing below average precipitation. When we go and look at the second layer, that's for Southern California, for the desert southwest, you have a 40 to 50% chance of seeing below average precipitation. And then the third layer highlights a likely below average. That is a 50 to 60% chance that Phoenix, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, um, as well as San Diego will have a likelihood of not seeing a whole lot of big storms this winter, unfortunately, including for southern Florida as well. So the drought here could intensify, unfortunately, for these areas. So to summarize the precipitation anomaly forecast, you can see which areas are going to have a wetter and snowier winter and which areas are not on this map and again just like our temperature forecast ec stands for equal chances 33 above 33 normal 33 below so either or it goes in the gray shading areas so now what are my thoughts on my overall winter forecast for this upcoming winter and it's a dicey one depending on where you are located and boy this took a lot of thought a lot of studying and a lot of research it this map itself took me at least a day and a half to really think about, to uh, really brainstorm on what is likely to gonna happen. So this is not perfect. This is not what is 100% going to happen, but this gives us a general guideline and idea that this is the potential that this winter could have for these areas. 
So what I'm thinking right now, based on what we just looked at, is mild and wet conditions for the deep south, warm and dry for Florida and for southernmost Georgia, cold and wet for portions there of the Carolinas, okay? And then nor'easters are not to be really confused with blizzard-like conditions because nor'easters, you get that battle zone. You can get some ice. You can get some um, rain and snow mix along that warm frontal boundary. Where these nor'easters track along the coast will really be important. So just because you're seeing nor'easters here does not mean you're going to get feet of snowfall in downtown New York. That's not what I'm trying to say here, but there is a risk for some big snowstorms coming up along the eastern seaboard where we get that gradient, where we get cold air meeting warm air, where we get uh, barrel clinic dynamics. That's where we are concerned about some nor'easters. And then, of course, more deeper inland where it's just snow, you could see a few blizzards this winter as well with lake effect snow storms um, possible or very likely, especially for Buffalo, New York, Watertown, New York. Grand Rapids in Michigan, um, very likely to see some big, big time lake effect snow, some of the worst that we have seen in at least a couple of years. And then snowstorms blanketing much of the Midwest and the Corn Belt with stormy conditions down there in Dixie Alley. Now, the word stormy does not mean severe weather. I've took that out of the equation, but it means that there would be at least a marginal to slight risk for severe weather, very big rainstorms, strong winds with these storms as they move across so that's kind of what we're dealing with here but not necessarily big severe weather outbreaks now for the desert southwest it is going to be unfortunately a rather quiet one warm and dry you will get some rain and some high elevation snow but it is not looking very eventful by any means at all for portions of phoenix unfortunately this winter so you're going to have to um, save water and conserve it very well Mild conditions and perhaps dry conditions for most of California in the central and northern portion of the state with chilly conditions in our high desert locations of the Great Basin with mountain snow conditions for the Rockies and for the Cascade Range with mild and chilly wet conditions across much of the metropolitan area of Portland as well as Seattle. Let's not forget about the Arctic outbreaks where there's a pretty decent chance that we will have very cold Arctic temperatures as low as negative 30 to negative 50 degrees below zero at least once this winter season. If that's in December, January, or February, we don't know when it's going to happen, but the guidance does suggest that you're in for a rude awakening for some of the coldest temperatures ever recorded this upcoming winter. So with that being said, I sure hope you did enjoy this video and you found this winter forecast very helpful, detailed, and informative. And I'm hoping you also found it a lot more accurate. I did mess up on my previous winter forecast because, of course, that was in August, and now we have a pretty good idea of what this winter is going to bring. And so what you see here is pretty much my final thoughts on what this is going to look like. But of course, I will have another winter forecast out one more of these once we go into late October. And that will be probably my last one of the winter season as we get deeper and closer to our overall winter forecast. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I sure hope you found this helpful and I'll be back with you more soon with more awesome weather content.